Good evening, this is Mr. Winter Mallet. And in this video, we are going to learn how our pupil react to bright light as well as dim light. The reflex action of how our pupil become larger and smaller depending on the intensity of the light we are exposed to. First, we are going to learn about the structure of our eyes from the front view. The horizontal view, we will learn it in the next video because all we need is the frontal view of the eyes for us to describe the pupil reflex in response to bright and dim light. So if you have a friend lying around, you can take your handphone and switch on the light. Shine the light into your friend's pupil or eyes, then you will see the pupil shrinking. So how does this come about? First, we need to learn what are the names of various parts of our eyes so that you will understand what I'm referring to when I'm using certain term. The pupil is the hole in the center of the iris. I will tell you why it's iris later because the important thing is pupil. So the black color hole that we see in the center of our eyes is called the pupil. It is not a black color spot, but instead it is a hole. And because all the lights are absorbed in the structure that is behind the eyes, you will learn that in the next video. That's why no light is reflected back, hence it looks black. Iris is the part of our eyes surrounding our pupil. It contains two set of involuntary muscles which is the circular muscle and the radial muscle. And these two muscles will help to control the size of our pupil. Hence, controlling the amount of light that will enter our eyes. Sclera is the white color part of our eyes. They are a protective layer, I would say not important for you to know with respect to the size of our pupil. Other parts of our eyes include tear gland, eyelashes, and eyelid. Our iris, like I said, contains two set of involuntary muscle. The circular muscle, they are going around the eyes. They are circular for a reason. And the radial muscle. Radial come from the word radius. So radial muscle will be the muscle that are going in the direction towards the middle of the eyes. So in bright light, what will happen is the circular muscle will contract and the radial muscle will relax. The pupil will become smaller and less light will enter. In dim light, the circular muscle will relax, radial muscle will contract so that the pupil become larger and more lights will be able to enter. If you have a lens lying around, you can imagine that the blades are the circular muscle. If you don't have a lens, then just look at my lens down here. So imagine the blade of the lens is the circular muscle. When the intensity of light increase, the circular muscle will contract. Then you can see the pupil becoming smaller. When the light intensity decrease, the size of the pupil will increase, allowing more light to pass through. If you think that the lens is too small, then I have a bigger lens. Okay. So here I have a bigger lens and we can adjust the circular muscle as well. Okay. 
So when the light intensity increase, the circular muscle will contract, allowing less light to go into the retina. Then when the light intensity decrease, the circular muscle will relax, allowing more light to pass through. So just use the blade of the lens to imagine that it is the circular muscle. So I hope the demonstration with the lens can help you to understand more about the circular muscle, how the circular muscle when it is contract, it will shrink the pupil. And this part is actually quite simple. The circular muscle and the radial muscle, they are antagonistic muscle. When circular muscle contract, radial muscle will relax. And it will result in the pupil becoming smaller or larger, depending on whether the circular muscle is contracting or relaxing. So in some way, this part I would say you must know. Therefore, copy down, but don't just blindly copy and vomit everything out because if you figure out the logic behind it, actually you don't have to remember that much. Circular just turn and shrink, so pupil become smaller. Radial muscle is the opposite. When circular muscle contract, it will relax. Then when circular muscle relax, radial muscle will contract. Yeah, that's about it. And if we look at the neurological pathway, what will happen is this, there's a change in light intensity. The receptor in our retina, which you will learn in the next video, will sense the change in light intensity. There are optic nerve, which is the sensory neuron. Action potential will travel from the sensory neuron to our brain. Our brain, which is where the relay neuron is located, will transmit information to the motor neuron. And motor neuron will transmit the nerve impulse or action potential to the iris, whereby the circular muscle and radial muscle will do the appropriate contraction and relaxation. And that will be all for the pupil reflex action.